Nanami has been expelled from her home and has nowhere to live, but then a person named Mikaj offers her a place to stay in his shrine and kisses her. Because of that kiss, Nanami transforms into a deity, and now she is going to make couples of the shrine. However, in this task, her messenger Tomo will be assisting her. The interesting part of the story is how Nanami eventually falls in love with Tomo. Nanami had been living with her father in an apartment for many years. However, her father became addicted to alcohol and one day he unknowingly took out many loans. As a result, they lost their apartment. Nanami was shocked to discover that her father had arranged to live somewhere else but had left her alone. Now homeless, she found herself sitting in a park, cursing her fate. She was sad, but then she noticed a man who climbed up a tree to escape some street dogs. It was clear that the man was afraid of the dogs and had climbed the tree to save himself. Seeing him in trouble, Nanami decided to help him. Upon being helped, the man revealed that his name was Mikaj, and that he had returned to the city after many years. Now Mikaj wanted to know why Nanami was in that place, so he started asking her for information. Nanami, like a parrot, told him everything truthfully. And this is how Mikaj learned that her father had ousted her from their home, and now she was in search of a new place to live. Mikaj mentioned that his house was nearby and he didn't want to go there anymore so she could become the owner of his house. Along with this, he kissed Nanami on the forehead, gave her a map, and then left. Nanami took the map, but she still thought he was joking with her. After all, it was hard to believe that someone would believe in such a story. She went to the location indicated on the map and found her suspicion to be correct. At the location, there was a shrine. Angry, she decided to go back to the park, but just then, two strange creatures appeared and mistaking her for Mikaj, welcomed her with great respect. Meanwhile, an unknown man emerged from inside the shrine, angry at Mikaj for not looking back at this place for 20 years. This person's name was Tomo, and he was about to express his anger at Nanami, mistaking her for Mikaj. When he realized Manami's true identity, he became angry, and was surprised that Mikaj had deceived him in this manner too. The two mini creatures then reveal that Nanami is their next goddess. This was because before leaving, Mikaj had transferred his powers to her. Nanami was confused about what was happening and what they meant by her being a goddess. Then Nanami remembered the last time she met Mikaj when he kissed her forehead. That kiss had created a seal on her forehead, meaning she had now become the owner of the shrine and in addition, a land goddess. Tomo did not like the idea of Manami being a goddess and refused to acknowledge her as such. In fact, Tomo had been a follower of the shrine's goddess and fulfilled all her demands. But he flatly refused to accept Manami as his goddess and asked her to leave the place. With no other choice, Nanami decided to stay for the night and planned to leave the next day. When she woke up the next morning, she thought she had a terrible dream where she had been made a goddess. But it wasn't a dream. The two creatures were sitting next to Nanami, and they came to her, denying that her experience was just a dream. According to the creatures, Nanami can live in the shrine as a goddess and will have to manage all the duties of a goddess. They explain her responsibilities which range from cleaning to watering plants. Nanami, having no other place to stay, reluctantly begins to fulfill these tasks despite some difficulties. During her chores, Tomo arrives and asks her why she doesn't leave the shrine and go back to her own home. Nanami explains to him that she has no home to go back to. However, Tomo shows no sympathy for her situation and instead rudely kicks her out of the shrine. After this incident, Tomo leaves the shrine and on the other side, Nanami, having completed a lot of work, starts to feel exhausted. She begins to think that everyone is fooling her by making her a goddess and burdening her with endless tasks. Nanami's attention is drawn to an elderly woman outside the shrine expressing her wishes. Soon, Nanami realizes that as long as she is a goddess, she can hear the wishes of everyone who comes to the shrine and has the responsibility to fulfill them. After all this, Nanami understands that she is just a normal girl and feels incapable of handling such tasks, so she considers leaving. However, the two creatures explain to her that if she seeks Tomo's help in her duties, her work would become much easier. But Nanami learns from the creatures that Tomo has already left the shrine and if she wants to meet him, she will need to go to the other world. Nanami wanted to persuade Tomo to join her, so she decides to go to the other world. We then see the trio traveling to the demon world, a place where demons and ghosts coexisted. They were on a mission to find Tomo, and after some effort, they managed to locate him. They saw that Tomo was enjoying himself with some demons, living a life quite different from his past. When the trio reached him, the two creatures asked him to return to the shrine with them. However, Tomo refused to return and become Manami's messenger. Minami, upon arriving, became angry with Tomo for relaxing in the demon world while abandoning the shrine. Displeased with his behavior, she insisted that he come back to the shrine with her. Tomo was surprised to see Nanami in the demon world, a place where it was dangerous for humans to be. Frustrated with his responses, Nanami decided to leave and head back to the shrine alone. Meanwhile, Tomo becomes angry with the other two creatures for bringing Nanami to the other world, 
as it was forbidden for humans to enter, and many demons could have attacked Nanami. On the other side, we see Nanami storming off in anger, with the two creatures trying to stop her. Shortly after, Nanami encounters some demons who were about to attack her. At this critical moment, the mini creatures quickly grab Nanami and flee from the area, thus saving her from the demons. Having narrowly escaped the demons, Nanami boldly continues her journey back to her shrine. Witnessing Nanami's troubles, the creatures offer her a solution. They suggest that if she can make Tomo her messenger, he would obey her every command, and he could even handle all the shrine's work for her. Nanami was curious about how she could make Tomo her messenger. The creatures explained that she could easily do so by forming a contract with him, which would involve kissing him. Upon hearing that a kiss was necessary to seal a contract, Nanami panicked and started to run away. While fleeing, Nanami encountered an elderly woman asking for help. As Nanami approached to assist, the woman revealed her true form as a demon and began chasing Nanami, intent on harming her. Meanwhile, one of the creatures went to Tomo and asked him to help Nanami. Initially, Tomo refused to listen, but he was curious to see Nanami in distress, so he decided to go to the location where she was being troubled. Eventually, Tomo arrived at the scene where Nanami had climbed a tree to escape the elderly demon. The demon was slowly climbing the tree to reach Nanami. In the midst of this, Tomo saw an opportunity and told Nanami that if she requested his help, he could save her life. However, Nanami, being stubborn, refused to listen and continued to fend for herself. Just then, the elderly woman got very close, causing Nanami to slip and start falling from the tree. In the process, she accidentally pulled Tomo with her, and as they fell, they unintentionally kissed. Although the kiss was accidental, it fulfilled the condition for the contract and Tomo became her messenger. Reluctantly, he had to save Nanami from the demon. After escaping the demons, Nanami even managed to say thank you to Tomo. The next morning when Nanami woke up, she initially thought she had experienced another strange dream. However, the presence of the two creatures made her realize that everything that had happened was real. When Nanami looked beside her, she saw Tomo, who was clearly troubled by the events of the previous day. Nanami asked him if he was unhappy about becoming her messenger. Tomo, in anger, admitted that he was indeed unhappy about serving a human. However, now that he was her messenger, he was obliged to fulfill his duties. Reluctantly, he would ensure Nanami's safety and assist her with her tasks. He explained to Nanami that she would have to perform the duties of a god at the shrine, just as Mikaj did. Mikaj was a matchmaker god who fulfilled people's wishes by forming couples. Now, it was Nanami's turn to fulfill these responsibilities. Tomo then suggested Nanami take some tests, which she failed easily. Frustrated with her failure, Tomo started to leave, but the too many creatures stopped him from doing so. Nanami's attention was caught by the TV, where she learned that Popstar was coming to her school. This news excited her, and she got ready to go to school. However, Tomo stopped her, revealing that ever since she became a new goddess, many people had set their sights on her, wanting to steal her powers. Therefore, he didn't want to risk sending her out. Despite Tomo's concerns, Nanami insisted on going to school. Tomo, conceding defeat, came up with a special idea. He covered Nanami's head with a cloth to conceal the seal on her forehead, allowing her to go to school. The cloth hid the seal effectively, but also caused Nanami some trouble. Her schoolmates, seeing her in this unusual getup, started to make fun of her. Then Nanami's attention turned to Kurama, a pop star who had recently joined her class. She thought she could become good friends with him, but to her surprise, Kurama approached her and rudely told her to vacate her seat. He publicly humiliated her, making her feel deeply hurt, and she went to the restroom to cry. While there, Tomo showed up and began taunting her, which only made her feel worse. When Nanami came out of the restroom, Kurama saw her and apologized for his behavior, but his apology was full of attitude. Annoyed by his demeanor, Nanami walked away from him. Later, during class, Nanami realized she had forgotten to bring her lunch in her rush. A rude classmate then mocked her, questioning if she even had money to buy lunch. In response, Nanami reached into her pocket and surprisingly pulled out a bunch of money. Both the rude classmate and Nanami herself were shocked, as she had no idea how the money ended up in her pocket. In the class, Kurama announced that someone had stolen his money, and the amount he mentioned was exactly the same as what Nanami had found in her pocket. It became clear that Kurama had deliberately planted the money in Nanami's pocket to embarrass her in front of the class. Everyone started suspecting Nanami, which made her feel terrible. Seeing Nanami being humiliated, Tomo intervened. He announced in front of everyone that he had brought lunch for Nanami and also revealed that she was his mistress, warning others not to bother her. He then pointed out to Kurama that his money was actually under his own foot, implying that Kurama had dropped himself and was falsely accusing Nanami. This act by Tomo saved Nanami's dignity, but by this point, Nanami had developed a strong dislike for Kurama. 
The next day, Nanami set off for school again, this time without wearing the cloth that hid the seal. Concerned for her safety, Tomo discreetly followed her. Along the way, Nanami was stopped by some girls from her class who were interested in getting closer to Tomo because of his relationship with her. Suddenly, a car pulled up in front of Nanami and Kurama was inside. He offered to take Minami to school with him, but she angrily refused, which hurt Kurama's feelings. During school, Minami was focused on her studies, while Tomo secretly kept an eye on her. However, after watching her for a while, he fell asleep. Then Minami received a letter from Kurama, inviting her to meet him on the rooftop. Minami went to meet Kurama on the rooftop, questioning what he wanted to tell her. It was then revealed that Kurama was not just a human, but a spirit in disguise, intent on stealing Minami's goddess powers to become a god himself. Just as he was about to attack Minami, Tomo arrived at the right moment and saved her life. Using his powers, Tomo transformed Kurama into an ostrich and Kurama began running wildly around the school. When Minami learned about Kurama's transformation into an ostrich, she became furious with Tomo and demanded that he restore Kurama to his original form. Tomo then revealed that Kurama had come to steal her powers, suggesting that he didn't deserve sympathy. Hearing this, Nanami was initially angry and even tried to choke Kurama, but she soon felt pity for him and asked Tomo to turn him back. Tomo was surprised by Nanami's decision to help Kurama despite knowing his intentions. He wondered why she would assist someone who had tried to harm her. After Kurama was restored to his normal state, Nanami tended to his injuries which deeply impressed Kurama, leading him to develop genuine feelings of love for her. Meanwhile, Mikage observed Nanami from afar, pleased with her for fulfilling her duties as a goddess. Later, a bird arrived with a letter in its beak from Nanami. Tomo read the letter carefully and discovered it was from the goddess of the lake Isara, who was inviting Nanami to meet her. Tomo revealed that Isara was also a spirit and possessed the power to transform into a catfish. The reason for her wanting to meet Nanami was unclear, which intrigued Nanami, but Tomo insisted she stay in a room and not meet Isara. According to him, Isara would not be pleased to see her, so it was unnecessary for Nanami to confront her. In the next scene, we see Tomo speaking with the goddess of the lake Isara. He explained that Nanami was currently busy with her duties and therefore could not meet with them. Tomo calmly presented the situation to Isara's messenger, but the messenger was not pleased. He was angry, thinking that Tomo was disrespecting Isara by not bringing Nanami forward. He questioned Tomo if Nanami was indeed a human, as the rumors suggested. Tomo admitted that while Nanami was human, she had been chosen by Mikage as his successor, implying there must be something special about her. However, Izara's messenger grew even angrier and drew his sword in a fit of rage. He threatened Tomo with a sword at his throat, demanding that Nanami be brought before him, or else he would kill Tomo. Nanami, who had been listening from another room, realized Tomo was in danger and instinctively came forward. Her appearance angered Tomo, as she had now further complicated the situation by revealing herself. After Nanami's arrival, the messenger was still ready to attack her. Tomo, though reluctant, had to prepare for the fight and easily block the messenger's assault. In the next instant, Tomo used his powers and transformed the messenger into a fish. Nanami, upon seeing this, became very angry with Tomo and demanded that he apologize to his guest for his mistake. Feeling intimidated by Nanami, Tomo started to apologize to the transformed messenger. Following this incident, Goddess Izara appeared, who had come to seek Nanami's help. She first apologized for her messenger's rudeness, and then requested Nanami's assistance in her matchmaking endeavors. Tomo and Nanami were unaware of what kind of help Izara needed. Izara then recounted her past, revealing that ten years ago she had seen a boy named Kataru by a lake and had fallen in love with him. However, since that moment, she had never seen Kataru again. She approached Nanami for help because Nanami had become the next matchmaking goddess after Mikaj, and with her assistance, Izara hoped to complete her love story. Tomo initially refused to help Izara because he couldn't bear to see a human and a spirit god fall in love. However, Nanami, unlike Tomo, was willing to help Izara. She started searching for Kataru in the city after asking for his name. Initially, Tomo was against Nanami's decision, but due to his responsibility, he joined her in the search. After a thorough search around the city, they ended up at a restaurant. Nanami was disheartened because they hadn't found Kataru despite searching all day. As she was brooding over her disappointment, a rude student from her class approached and started bothering her. This time, however, the student didn't notice Tomo, who was sitting right next to Nanami. Tomo extended his hand, grabbed the student's hand, and warned him to stay away from Nanami. After this incident, the rude student became frightened and left. Nanami, however, was upset with Tomo for bothering the student. She told him that instead of interfering in her personal life, he should focus on finding Kataru. Just then, a boy from the restaurant stepped forward and revealed that his name was Kataru and asked if they were looking for him. 
The very Kaviru they had been searching for had now appeared before them. Seizing the opportunity, Nanami arranged to meet him in a park. Shortly afterwards, Nanami met Kataru in the park. He was curious about why she was looking for him. Nanami disclosed that a girl he met by Lake Inara ten years ago now wished to see him again. Kataru didn't remember the incident from ten years ago and had even forgotten about the girl. However, persuaded by Nanami, he agreed to meet her. Nanami then instructed him to wait in the same park the next morning. Afterwards, Nanami headed back to her shrine and this time Tomo had arranged for transportation to pick her up. He escorted her to the vehicle, and they left for the shrine. The next morning, Isara's messenger was furious because Izara had been missing for several hours and he couldn't find her anywhere. He soon discovered that Nanami and Izara were together, where Nanami was giving Izara a makeover so she could meet Kataru as a human. The messenger was upset by their actions, but despite his anger, Isara fully made over, headed to the park to meet Kataru. Kataru, following Nanami's instructions, was waiting in the park, but as no one showed up initially, he started to leave. Just then, Izara arrived, causing Kataru to halt his departure. At first, Kataru didn't seem interested in Izara, but that was short-lived. Soon, he started to see something special in her and ran out to buy a cold drink to please her. During this time, Izara was left alone and some thugs approached to attack her. Nanami, who was watching from a distance, wanted to help, but Tomo stopped her, explaining that this moment was a real test for Kataru. As Kataru returned and saw Ezura being threatened by thugs, he didn't hesitate to step forward and save her. This act of bravery marked the beginning of their love story. Nanami had successfully completed her first matchmaking task. However, one day at school, while Nanami was busy, she noticed a snake being harassed by some students. Concerned for the snake, she managed to rescue it. After releasing the snake, Nanami noticed a mark on her hand that appeared after the snake left. Later, back at the shrine with Tomo, he noticed the mark on Nanami's hand. He was surprised because the mark was a form of a marriage proposal. This meant that the snake had chosen Nanami as its mistress, and it could come to claim her at any time. Tomo, unable to stand by and watch Nanami possibly being in danger, decides to ensure her safety throughout the day. He even enrolls as a new student in her class to keep her under his constant watch. As Tomo joins the class, many female students show interest in becoming his friends, but he rejects all their offers. For him, Nanami was his mistress and he couldn't consider anyone else in that way. When Nanami hears about Tomo's behavior, she pulls him out of the class. She is concerned that Tomo's unusual actions might land them both in trouble. While they are talking outside, a student named Momo overhears their conversation and politely excuses herself. During this time, Momo notices an unknown man passing by. The very person who had come to claim Nanami as his mistress. After a while, Nanami, seeing Tomo's concern for her, begins to develop feelings for him. A soft corner for Tomo had started to form in her heart. While Tomo was asleep, she decided to step out of the class. During this time, the unknown man who had been lurking around attacks and abducts Nanami. When Tomo wakes up and finds Nanami missing, he becomes furious and starts searching everywhere for her. Despite his efforts, he is unable to find her. Meanwhile, we learn that the unknown man's name is Misuki. Like Tomo, Misuki is also a messenger, and he has brought Nanami to marry her. Nanami was not pleased with the situation. After all, she couldn't just marry any random person. She refused Mizuki's proposal and tried to leave his shrine, but she found herself mysteriously returning to the shrine after running a short distance. Mizuki revealed that Nanami couldn't leave and claimed he would take better care of her than Tomo ever could. Left with no choice, Nanami pretended to agree with Mizuki for the time being. They sat down together, and her conversation turned to a plum tree nearby. Mizuki shared that the tree was planted by his goddess, and that he would protect it at all costs. Meanwhile, Tomo and the many creatures were distressed about Nanami's disappearance. Tomo, determined to find Nanami, started searching for a snake spirit that could lead him to Mizuki. Eventually, he managed to locate Mizuki's shrine and set off to rescue Nanami. Back at the shrine, Mizuki was trying everything to win Nanami over, treating her better than Tomo in hopes of capturing her heart. However, despite his efforts, Nanami remained unswayed. She made it clear that she was happy with Tomo and preferred to stay at her own shrine. During her time in the shrine, Nanami noticed a certain emptiness. When she looked at the place meant for the goddess, she saw that it was vacant. This led her to realize that there was no god in the shrine. Finding this odd, Nanami asked Mizuki to tell her the whole truth. Mizuki then revealed that many years ago, a curse rumor had spread about his shrine, leading people to stop coming. As a result, the goddess and her followers disappeared, but Mizuki refused to leave and decided to care for the shrine for his entire life. Hearing Mizuki's story, Nanami felt emotional but still refused to become his bride. This refusal made Mizuki extremely angry, and he became determined to have Nanami by any means. At this crucial moment, Tomo arrived at the shrine. Seeing Mizuki's behavior and his threat to Nanami, Tomo became furious. 
He was ready to confront Mizuki for troubling Minami. A fierce battle started between Tomo and Mizuki, with Tomo easily gaining the upper hand. He had nearly defeated Mizuki when, in a desperate move, Mizuki used his powers to set the shrine on fire. Mizuki's anxiety grew as he saw the entire shrine engulfed in flames. However, his concern was more for a plum tree in the shrine than for the shrine itself. He rushed to the tree and breathed a sigh of relief upon finding it unharmed. It was revealed that this plum tree was the last remnant of the shrine's goddess and Mizuki was adamant about protecting it. After the goddess left, Mizuki had been left in solitude, which was why he wanted to make Manami his, hoping she would end his loneliness. Tomo, in his anger, was about to burn the plum tree as well, but this time Manami intervened, stopping him. She then went to Mizuki to offer comfort. She expressed her sorrow for his loneliness and assured him that she cared about him. Nanami told Mizuki that she was willing to visit him if he ever wanted to meet, but she preferred to stay with her family at her own shrine. With this resolution, Tomo and Nanami set off back to their shrine. Along the way, Tomo, still upset with Nanami for being too close to the snake, notices a wound on her. Without delay, he begins to heal it. This moment made Tomo realize the kind of human he was protecting someone who couldn't even take care of herself properly. He decided then to make even more effort to keep Nanami safe. However, a new twist was unfolding in the story. The goddess of heaven, Narukami, had discovered that a girl named Nanami had been made a goddess. But what surprised her more was that Tomo had become Nanami's messenger. Narukami had been pursuing Tomo for years, wanting him as her own messenger. But despite her requests to Mikage, she had never succeeded in acquiring him. Learning that an ordinary human girl had become Tomo's new master, Narukami set out to find Nanami. Tomo had realized that Narukami was furious with him and might attack Nanami at any moment. So he decided to wait for Narukami while Nanami went to school alone. Meanwhile, Nanami arrived at school happily, unaware of the brewing storm. During class, she discovered that the too many creatures had sneaked into her bag. Since they were invisible to ordinary human eyes, Nanami wasn't worried about them being noticed. Tomo, however, was puzzled. Usually, Narukami's arrival was marked by dark clouds, but this time, those clouds were heading somewhere else. It didn't take long for Tomo to realize that the clouds were moving towards Nanami's school, indicating that Narukami was planning a direct attack on Nanami. Tomo's concern escalated, prompting him to rush towards the school without delay. At the school, Nanami was occupied with her tasks, but suddenly, Narukami made her entrance and summoned Nanami to another world. In this other world, Narukami prepared to attack Nanami. Before she could do anything, Tomo arrived and managed to intervene, holding Narukami off to some extent. Furious that Tomo was serving a mere human like Minami, Narukami angrily removed Nanami's seal, then transformed Tomo into a small child. Narukami then told Nanami that if she returned to her, Narukami would restore Tomo to his original form and left from there. Now we see Nanami, who had become homeless again without a house or her goddess powers. She looked at Tomo, who had been transformed into a little boy. Tomo didn't expect much from Nanami and suggested that she go back to living a normal human life. However, Nanami ignored his words and started worrying about him. She soon found out that Tomo was getting sick, gradually becoming more ill. Nanami thought about taking him to a doctor, but she quickly realized that a regular doctor couldn't heal a spirit. Feeling hopeless and very sad, Nanami didn't know what to do. Just then, she saw Kurami passing by. Seeing an opportunity, she asked Kurami for help. In the next moment, we see them at Kurami's house. Karami revealed that Tomo's condition was worsening because his small body couldn't handle all his energy. On the other side, we see Narukami, who was both sad and angry that Tomo hadn't returned. She then sends two of her messengers to bring Tomo back. Meanwhile, Tomo's condition begins to improve slightly. When he and Nanami are alone in a park, Narukami's messengers arrive. They were there to take Tomo, but Nanami refuses to let them. She wasn't going to leave Tomo alone. Calming Nanami down, Tomo decides to go with the messengers. After Tomo leaves, Nanami feels very sad. Tomo, having reached Narukami, manages to escape from her. Hearing this, Nanami is surprised and learns that Narukami in her anger is heading to destroy their shrine. Narukami arrives at the shrine, ready to wreak havoc, but Nanami gets there just in time to try and stop her. Narukami's anger doesn't subside easily. Nanami then makes Narukami an offer. She will look for Tomo, but if she's successful, Narukami must restore Tomo to normal. Nanami sets out to find Tomo, but despite her efforts, she can't find him. Eventually, Narukami comes to the realization that Tomo doesn't like her, and that she can't make him hers despite her desires. On the other side, Nanami spots a magical butterfly. Sensing something special about it, she follows it and soon finds Tomo, who had been hiding in a small mirror. 
Afterwards, Narukami's two followers approached Nanami, healing Tomo and restoring his seal. Now both of them were back to normal. Once healed, Tomo kisses Nanami and becomes her follower again. One day, as Nanami was getting ready for school, Tomo found out that she was feeling very ill. So he decides to go to school in her place, transforming himself to look like her. He then heads to school. Meanwhile, at school, Kurama was also present and wanted to get closer to Nanami. Unaware that it was actually Tomo in Nanami's guise, Kurama inadvertently tries several times to please him, believing him to be Nanami. In class, when Tomo was asked to read aloud, he struggled because he didn't know how to read. Kurama stepped forward to help and read the book instead, but this didn't sit well with Tomo. Later, Tomo tried singing, but Kurama interrupted him and started sitting in the middle, making Tomo even more annoyed. Kurama was confused about why Nanami was getting upset with him. He went to meet her and Tomo, pretending to be Nanami, asked why Kurama was after her seal. Kurama explained that he was just trying to get closer to her, and she was misunderstanding his intentions. Even after hearing this, Tomo, not giving Kurama much attention, walked away. Then we see Momo walking through the corridor, heading to an abandoned classroom, unaware that a demon was waiting for her there. A monster appeared, intending to scare her, but just in time, Tomo arrived. He captured the demon and transformed it into a candy. Back at the shrine, Nanami was alone when Mizumi arrived. Nanami had promised him that he could visit her anytime. Mizumi came to spend time with her in Tomo's absence, fulfilling the promise she had made to him. In Tomo's absence, Mizumi reveals to Nanami that Tomo is not what he seems or how he portrays himself. Nanami doesn't understand, so Mizumi decides to use his powers to show her the truth. Mizumi sits in front of a burner and transports Nanami's soul to the past. This was a part of his unique abilities. In the past, Nanami finds herself in the body of a girl, who is none other than Akiji. Akiji, until now an unknown character, had some connection to Tomo. She arrives in a forest where she finds an injured child and takes him to an abandoned place to care for him. The child Aki found was actually a demon planning to attack her. Just when Akigi was in danger, Tomo arrived. His behavior had significantly changed and he asked Aki for help. Tomo managed to save her life, but then an unknown spirit named Akura appeared. Akura was searching for Akigi, but Tomo had hidden her by then. Akiji, trying to escape from the scene, started running away, but suddenly, she tripped and fell, getting caught in her attempt to flee. After experiencing the past through Akiji's eyes, Nanami wakes up, struggling to believe what she had just seen. At that moment, Tomo arrives and confronts Mizumi, demanding to know why he was there and what he had done. Eventually, the tension between Tomo and Mizumi eases. Later, back at school, one of Nanami's classmates approaches her, curiously asking if she and Tomo are dating. Nanami, unsure of Tomo's feelings for her, shakes her head in denial. Seizing the opportunity, the classmate asks Nanami for a favor, to leave Tomo alone so she can spend some time with him. Nanami, making up an excuse, heads back to her shrine, leaving Tomo at school. In her absence, the classmate takes advantage of the situation and proposes to Tomo. Tomo was very clear that he wasn't interested in dating anyone. When Nanami found out that her decision to leave Tomo alone with the girl had caused complications, she became worried. However, her worries were short-lived as Tomo soon arrived and expressed his anger, upset that she had allowed another girl to pursue him without his permission. During his conversation, Tomo revealed that Nanami was his only priority, and he couldn't even think about being with another girl. Hearing this, Nanami's heart was filled with joy. She had fallen completely in love with Tomo, but was now pondering how to express her feelings to him. Kirama, who overheard their conversation, later warned Tomo not to say such things as it might lead Nanami to fall in love with him. Meanwhile, Nanami was still troubled about how to confess her love for Tomo. Her friend suggested that she should share her feelings with Tomo. Determined to confess her feelings, Nanami decided that she would reveal her heart to Tomo no matter what. That night on the roof, Tomo noticed a change in Nanami's behavior and worried she might be sick again. However, he was mistaken. Nanami, after much difficulty, finally confessed to Tomo that she had developed feelings for him and thought about him all the time. Tomo was surprised to hear this and advised Nanami to remove these thoughts from her mind, explaining that he couldn't fall in love with a human. Nanami, upset by his rejection, accidentally started falling off the roof. Despite her desire not to accept Tomo's help after his rejection, Tomo intervened and saved her life. Following the rejection, Nanami was heartbroken. To cheer her up, her friends planned a trip to the beach and included her in their plans. When Nanami told Tomo about her plans to go to the beach, he advised against it, warning her of the numerous demons in the ocean that could attack her. However, Nanami was adamant about going. At that moment, Mizumi arrived and decided to ensure Nanami's safety at the beach and Tomo, 
though reluctant, ended up joining them. The reason behind Tomo's reluctance to go to the beach would soon become clear. At the beach, while everyone was having fun, one of the girls from the group started drowning in the ocean. Nanami asked Tomo for help to save the girl. Although Tomo initially didn't want to enter the water, he did so at Nanami's insistence. Tomo successfully rescued the girl, but then a significant twist occurred. A creature emerged from the ocean, revealing itself to be the Dragon King, the ruler of the ocean. The Dragon King was angry with Tomo for some reason and demanded that Tomo come with him. Tomo quietly agreed to go with the Dragon King, but Nanami started to follow them. The Dragon King, displeased with Nanami following them, ordered her to stay on the shore. Nanami asked why the Dragon King was angry with Tomo. The Dragon King revealed that 500 years ago, Tomo had stolen one of his eyes and disappeared, and now he wanted revenge. Nanami, wanting to save Tomo, asked the Dragon King for a way to do so. The Dragon King told her that if she could retrieve his stolen eye, he would spare Tomo's life. Otherwise, Tomo would face certain death. Once the Dragon King left, Nanami set out to find the stolen eye with Mizumi's help. Using Mizumi's time travel power, they went back 500 years to the time when Tomo had stolen the Dragon King's eye. Upon traveling back in time, they encountered an elderly woman. The woman was about to trick Nanami, but Mizumi arrived just in time and prevented the woman from doing anything to Nanami. While traveling, Nanami spotted Tomo carrying the Dragon King's eye. Nanami and Mizumi decided to follow him and discovered that Tomo had taken the eye for Akigi, who was ill. It was clear that Tomo had developed feelings for Akigi and wanted to save her by giving her the Dragon King's eye. After Tomo left, Mizumi urged Nanami to take the eye and escape. However, Nanami, concerned for Akagi, decided to feed her the eye and then leave. Mizumi was puzzled about how they could now save Tomo. They went back to the elderly woman who revealed that Nanami could potentially have a golden eye inside her. The woman asked for 30 years of Nanami's life in exchange for this golden eye. Nanami, desperate to save Tomo, agreed to the deal. Nanami was unaware that the elderly woman was trying to scam her. Just as the situation was about to worsen, Mizumi intervened, stopping Nanami from falling completely for the woman's trap. However, Nanami had already become a victim of the woman's deceit. Consequently, Mizumi, in order to save her, had to kiss Nanami, which resulted in him becoming her messenger as well. With no other options left, they headed to the ocean to find the Dragon King. They boarded a transport vehicle, where they encountered a woman who was carrying a special garment for her husband. During the journey, a large wave hit their vehicle, causing the garment to fall into the ocean. On the other side, we see the Dragon King preparing to take revenge on Tomo, unaware of Tomo's strength. Just as they were about to fight, Nanami arrives and relieved to see Tomo safe, clings to him. The Dragon King, still intent on fighting, is interrupted by the arrival of the woman who was sitting with Nanami earlier. It becomes apparent that the Dragon King is actually afraid of his wife, which is a common scenario for many. Even after all this, the Dragon King is still ready to attack Tomo. Nanami steps forward and offers him the pearl she obtained from the elderly woman. However, it turns out the pearl is not the Dragon King's eye, which angers him and he prepares to attack Tomo. At that moment, Mizumi arrives, holding the garment that had been lost in the ocean. Mizumi offers to return the garment in exchange for Tomo's freedom. The Dragon King, initially angry, is faced with his wife's fury upon seeing his actions. As expected, he is forced to agree and Tomo is freed from his clutches. In a dream sequence, we see Tomo many years ago, alone and covered in scars, hinting at a mysterious past. The details of this past will be revealed in the next season. We then see Mikage noticing Tomo and deciding to help him. Mikage sits with Tomo, removes all of his curses, and from that moment, Mikage becomes Tomo's god. The scene then shifts to Mizumi, who learns that when Tomo first joined Mikage, he had trouble integrating with humans. He even attacked humans occasionally, which greatly troubled Mikage. Now in the present, Tomo has improved significantly and has become popular, especially among the female students in Nanami's class, who all seem to like him. Nanami learns from her friends that they have planned a group party for the night. She initially refuses to join, but her friends insist on her coming. After school, Nanami feels sad and doesn't want to leave Tomo. However, Tomo comes to her and knows about the party she's supposed to attend. He gets upset about it, leading to an argument between them. Despite their disagreement, Nanami decides to go to the party forcibly. At the party with her friends, Nanami soon realizes that Tomo and some others are in a different room, keeping an eye on her. This discovery makes her even angrier with Tomo, and her enjoyment of the party diminishes. Later, a boy at the party tries to take advantage of Nanami being alone. Nanami doesn't like this at all, and just then, Tomo arrives. He threatens the boy and takes Nanami away from the party. Then we see Akura and Tameo facing off against a monster in another world. Who Akura is and what he's doing there will be revealed later. When the monster attacks them, 
Tamayo uses his power to defeat the monster, instantly destroying it. As Akura is about to thank Tamayo, Tamayo disappears. Next, we see a boy who was dreaming about Akura and Tamayo. Who is this boy dreaming about them? This too will be revealed as the story unfolds. We then move to Nanami's shrine, where after becoming a goddess, she has made significant improvements. The creatures are happy with Nanami's transformation into a goddess, as it has brought prosperity to their shrine. However, Tamayo was angry because Nanami seems to be neglecting her responsibilities in favor of sleep. It's clear he would be upset with her, and indeed he is. When Nanami wakes up and sees Tamo, she is very pleased. Every time she sees Tamo, she feels something in her heart. Could this be love? Nanami also notices a butterfly, which is likely the spiritual aura of Mikaj. Mizuni arrives and reveals to Nanami that, just like her goddess aura, Mikaj also has a spiritual aura represented by the butterfly. Before Nanami could ponder further, the weather god arrives with an offer for her, one that does not require her consent. According to the weather god, there is a meeting scheduled soon with all the goddesses, and it has not yet been decided whether a human like Nanami should be invited. The weather god decides to test Nanami to determine if she should receive an invitation. He makes it clear that they do not yet trust her powers and she must win their hearts. However, Nanami dislikes this proposal and rejects the offer, arguing that they should have asked her to attend the meeting directly instead of testing her unnecessarily. The weather god is surprised by Nanami's decision and plays his last card. He mentions that if Nanami passes the test and attends the meeting, she could learn something about Mikaj. With that, he disappears. Nanami is swayed by the weather god's words, knowing that Tameo has always been sad about Mikaj. She wants to win Tameo's heart by learning about Mikaj. Sometime later, when Nanami is at school, she summons the weather god during break time. As soon as she summons him, the weather god appears, and Nanami asks him to tell her about the test. Weather God gives Nanami a daemon egg, instructing her to take good care of it for the next seven days. If she successfully cares for the egg, she will pass the test. Nanami agrees to the test, but is worried about what a daemon actually is. The Weather God, irritated, leaves, telling her to research daemons on her own. As Nanami starts to gather information about daemons with the egg and Tao, Tameo gets wind that Nanami is considering attending the meeting and has even accepted the egg for the test. Tameo, not wanting Nanami to face embarrassment at the meeting, tries to keep her away from the test and even attempts to forcibly take the egg from her. However, the egg rolls away and ends up under Mizumi's foot. Nanami panics, fearing the egg might break. But just moments later, the egg cracks open on its own, and a cute monkey-like creature emerges. Nanami quickly realizes that this creature resembling a monkey is actually the daemon she was supposed to take care of. Tamao knows that the daemon hatching prematurely means Nanami has technically failed the test. The next morning, Nanami takes the daemon with her to school, despite Tamao's objections. Nanami explains that the daemon is there to protect her from evil entities, assuring Tameo that there's no need for worry. Tameo responds oddly, saying, I am yours, and you will need me. Although the remark was a bit strange, Nanami, pushing Tameo aside, leaves with the animal. At school, when Nanami reaches the library, the weather god appears and reveals that some gods are displeased with her test, hence they have sent some kind of evil entity to attack her. Before Nanami can fully grasp the situation, a massive monster attacks her. This monster, appearing as a giant spider, was actually a miasma. Meanwhile, Tameo, anxious in class, suddenly senses that Nanami is in danger. Without wasting any time, he rushes to save her. Just as the miasma is about to attack Nanami, Tameo arrives and saves her life. Nanami is overjoyed to see Tameo. The next day, we see Nanami quite upset. She desperately wants to attend the gods' meeting, but feels she's failing to prove herself worthy. She plans to protect herself with a talisman, and show her worthiness that day. Then we see a student who arrives at school early. As soon as she enters the class, she notices the giant monster standing there. The monster is about to attack her, so she runs out of the class in fear. Outside, she encounters Nanami and Tameo and tells them everything. Believing the girl's words, Nanami hands her the talisman to protect her from any evil entity. Nanami then goes to the classroom to confront the monster, but is surprised to find no monster there. She starts cleansing the environment with a talisman, but then the monster appears, laughing at her. It boasts that it is over 100 years old, so a talisman wouldn't bother it. After saying this, it attacks Nanami. Once again, we see Tameo, who learns that Nanami is in danger and rushes to save her. As the monster tries to enter Nanami's body with its dark power, Tameo arrives and stops it. Nanami's life is saved, but during the process, Tameo's hand is cursed. After being rescued, Nanami faints and later wakes up in the infirmary, finding herself alongside the classmate, who had also fallen victim to the monster. Soon, the weather god arrives, angry at Nanami. He criticizes her for her negligence, which caused her classmate and the daemon to suffer. 
Manami is disheartened by this, but then the weather god suggests that if she gives her daemon a name, it could significantly enhance its powers. Wanting to improve herself, Manami gives her daemon a special name. She names the daemon Mamaru, intending for it to bring prosperity and positivity everywhere, just as its name suggests. We then see Tameo, who is worried about his cursed hand, but suddenly, he is attacked by the monster again. Mamaru, activated by its new name, wastes no time in seeking out the monster. Soon, we see Mamaru approaching the monster and beginning to eliminate all the negativity in its vicinity. As Tameo becomes ensnared in the monster's trap, Nanami and Mamaru arrive. Mamaru's powers dissipate all the monster's negativity, and then Tameo sees Mikoj approaching him. Mikoj runs to embrace him, but Tameo soon realizes it's not Mikoj, but Nanami. With this, Tameo's curse is lifted, and he thanks Nanami. This was the first time Nanami had saved his life. The Weather God, witnessing all these events, is pleased with Nanami's success and declares her past in the test. This means Nanami can now attend the meeting of the gods. The next day, we see Tameo approaching the Weather God, questioning if the egg breaking in just one day was part of their trick. The Weather God agrees with his suspicions. Meanwhile, Nanami is preparing to go to the God Meeting Hall but needs to get a ticket to Izumo City first. Tameo tells her that he plans to accompany her to the meeting. During this time, we also see Mizumi insisting on going with Nanami. Since Nanami can only bring one person, she suggests they play a board game to decide who will accompany her to the gods' meeting. As Nanami and Mamoru head out to buy the ticket to Izumo, the two familiars start arguing among themselves. While Nanami is passing through the market after buying the plane ticket, Mamoru's fear senses suddenly activate and he transforms into a child. Nanami is surprised, but before she can ask for explanations, Mamoru urges her to leave quickly because they are being followed by ghosts. Hearing about the ghosts, Nanami starts running frantically, wishing Tameo were there with her. However, Tameo is busy playing the board game with Mizumi. When Tameo is winning the game, Mizumi tells him that even if he wins, his reputation in the eyes of the gods is not favorable. If he accompanies Nanami, he might face criticism. Therefore, Mizumi suggests Tameo step back, allowing him to go with Nanami instead. Meanwhile, Nanami, fleeing to save herself, reaches a park where she encounters a boy we saw at the very beginning of the season. Concerned for the boy, Nanami tells him to stay calm as they notice some ghosts arriving in search of her. When Mamoru sees the ghosts, he realizes that they were not ordinary ghosts, but former gods. The ghosts ask Minami if she is the human invited to the gods' meeting. Upon her affirmative nod, the ghosts become angry, deeming it a disgrace for a human to attend their meeting and become a god. They insult Nanami and mention that her familiar Tamao is also a disgraced spirit, whom the gods do not respect. Hearing the insults directed at Tamao, Nanami becomes angry, but the situation takes a turn when the boy starts laughing at the ghosts. Nanami is puzzled by the boy's fearlessness. The ghosts, angered by the boy's laughter, attack him, leaving him severely injured. Nanami's anger doubles, and she instructs Mamoru to cleanse the ghosts. Following Nanami's order, Mamoru attacks and cleanses the ghosts, causing them to disappear. With the ghosts gone, Nanami has protected both herself and the boy from their wrath, demonstrating her resolve and the power of her familiar, even in the face of disrespect from the former gods. After attending to the boy, he tries to take advantage of the moment to kiss Nanami, but she pushes him away and flees, bewildered by his actions. Once Nanami leaves, it's revealed that the boy is actually Akira, whom we saw at the beginning of the video. For some reason, he is trapped in a boy's body while his original body is imprisoned somewhere else. When Nanami arrives home thinking about the shrine, she remembers the ghost's words mocking Tamao. She is deeply concerned for Tamao and cannot bear to see him humiliated. Upon reaching the shrine, she finds Tamao, who has won his board game and suggests they go together, but Nanami quickly refuses him. She decides to take Mizumi with her, aiming to prevent any gods from disrespecting her or Tamao. Nanami and Mizumi then head to the airport, where they encounter a former goddess whom Nanami had matched with a human. The goddess comes to see off Nanami and Mizumi, after which Nanami departs for Izumo City. After arriving in Izumo City, Nanami and Mizumi spend some time exploring the city before heading to the gods' meeting. However, they need the help of a bird to reach the entrance gate. A strange occurrence happens with Nanami, she suddenly starts falling from the sky and lands directly in the god palace. When Nanami looks ahead, she sees a large gate where she needs to enter, but then a god named Tame Haya appears, who knows a lot about her. He challenges Nanami to show her powers, but without Mamoru, she is unable to demonstrate anything. Reluctantly, Nanami has to endure humiliation as Tame Haya belittles her, calling her merely a human and denying her entry to the meeting hall. Despite this, Nanami was determined to enter the meeting hall by any means. Meanwhile, Mizumi is worried because he left Nanami behind and wants to rush back to help her, but he is also stopped at the gate. 
The gatekeeper states that no familiar can enter without their god, although they can enter with the help of another god. Mizumi is concerned, wondering which god would dare to arrive late to the meetings. Just then, the weather god appears, having been delayed due to being preoccupied with his makeup. Grateful, Mizumi embraces him, ready to enter the palace with the weather god's assistance. Lost while searching for the meeting hall, Nanami nearly breaks down in tears until she spots Mikaj's spirit, who guides her to the meeting hall. Following the spirit, she finally arrives at her destination. Nanami introduces herself with pride in front of everyone, but this irritates the war god, who angrily tells her to leave. Nanami resolves not to leave, insisting she has every right to be there as a god. Before the war god can retaliate, the weather god arrives, kicks the war god out, and doubles his anger, leaving him powerless to act further. Then the meeting's host and lord of gods, Omanoshi, arrives and goes directly to Nanami. Omanoshi had wanted Nanami to attend and reveals the reason for inviting her. He takes her to his chamber and discusses the matter privately, revealing that the gods of the other world have disappeared for a few days and now Nanami must take care of the other world in their absence. Nanami agrees to the task but asks for Mikaj's location in return. After some thought, Omanoshi agrees her request. Along with this, Nanami and Mizumi reach the other world where they are accompanied by a guide, and this guide is none other than the weather god himself. In fact, the weather god had visited much later compared to the other gods, which is why he was given this punishment. Now Nanami starts to follow the weather god. After a while, we see Akura, who is being attacked by a demon. Right next to them, there was a portal through which Akura could go to the other world and regain his original body. Here, Nanami flying with the weather god arrives at this place. She is surprised to see Akura, because she still thought Akura was a human and wonders what he could be doing there. Now Nanami thinks about helping him, but by then the demon captures Akura and threatens Nanami saying that if she makes any wrong move, she will have to sacrifice this boy's life. With this, the demon takes Akira through the portal to the other world and worried for him. Nanami also jumps into the portal. Then we see Nanami following Akira. On the other hand, we see Tema, who was quite worried due to Nanami's absence and was disheartened, trying to rest. Here, both creatures try to calm him down and lighten his mood, but it doesn't affect him. However, Tema realizes that without Nanami around, he can freely attend to some personal matters. Following this, he goes straight to some women of ill repute, hoping to enjoy himself in Manami's absence. But upon arriving there, his mind starts to waver on its own. Even though he wanted to, he couldn't spend time with the women and kept thinking about Nanami all the time. Later, we see Tamo again, who was still trying to enjoy the company of these women. Here, one of the women, who was quite special to Tamo and sitting next to him, asked him to tell her about his old stories. During this, the woman mentioned that many years ago, Tamo and Akura were good friends. Hearing Akura's name makes everyone anxious because Akura was the same person who had committed many crimes against those women years ago. Tamo then starts to recount a story from a time when he and Akura had visited those women together, and we see Akura, who one by one was eliminating those women. Among them, one girl had survived and now Akura was about to attack her too. But before he could do so, Tamo arrived and after a long moment of eye contact, Akura let the girl go. With this, the backstory concludes, and we see the same girl, now an old woman, who had become the head of this place. She tells all the women that they could go to their sleeping quarters, and following her instructions, all the women leave. Then we see Tama, who rests his head in the lap of the old woman, beginning to relax. He had decided that he would stay here forever, considering it his home. Sumi falls into a deep sleep and suddenly sees Minami, thinking she has returned from her journey, so he decides to go back to the shrine. The old woman was happy because Timon had finally found a home where he could go and stay with someone. Upon returning to the shrine, Tamo realizes that Nanami has not yet returned and becomes sad again. On the other hand, we see Nanami who has somehow reached Akura and asks him to stay behind with her so she can protect him from other creatures. However, Nanami is also surprised that this boy being a human was alive and safe in this place. She was unaware that the one appearing as a human was actually Akura. When Nanami looks around, she sees many yokai nearby. She becomes frightened upon seeing them and decides to protect Akira by stepping in front of him. She tries to use her talisman to eliminate the yokai, but it has no effect. Akira then steps forward, moving Manami behind him. After that, he tells Manami to run away with him, and they quickly flee towards a river. Akira explains that the yokai cannot follow them into the river, so they are safe there. We then see the weather god, who is searching for Nanami, but this displeases the war god, who takes the weather god back with him. Next, we see Nanami and Akura, who are safe and alive, enjoying the warmth of a fire. However, their peace is soon disrupted when two women arrive and tell them they have been summoned by their owner. It turns out these two women are familiar, and they take Nanami to meet their shrine goddess. Happily, they reach the goddess, and Nanami notices the eerie surroundings. 
Nanami then meets the goddess of the place, telling her she wants to go back to the outside world. The goddess agrees to Nanami's request and prepares to send her out. However, they also inform Nanami that they would not allow Akira to leave with her because, although he appears human, he is possessed by a demonic power. According to the rules of this world, no deceased human can leave. Upon hearing this, Nanami is initially shocked but tells the goddess that she will not leave without Akira, no matter what. Nanami believed that Akira, despite being in a human body, must be under some compulsion to act this way. Determined to take Akira with her, Nanami comes up with an idea. She eats food from the other world, which means that now she cannot be forcibly sent back. Meanwhile, Akura, who was unconscious, slips into a flashback where his demonic soul wanders in hell. During this, he notices the soul of a human who had come to climb a mountain some time ago but had died in an accident. This soul's name was Kirihito, and upon seeing Akura, he begins to ask for help. Kirihito had promised his mother that he would return soon and apologize for his mistake, but now that he was dead in this place, he wanted to make his mother happy in any way possible. According to Akira, humans are often emotional and foolish, so he agrees to help Kirihito, but decides to enter his body in exchange. Without delay, Kirihito agrees, happy at the thought of being able to make his mother happy by returning. Akira's plan works, and he enters Kirihito's body, where he has been living since. Upon regaining consciousness, Akira sees Kirihito's mother sitting in front of him, waiting for him to wake up. As soon as Kirihito, with Akira inside, regains consciousness, his mother's sorrow ends and we see Akira, even as a demon, feeling sad during these emotional moments. After this moment, Akira decides to continue living in that body so that no god could recognize him and during this time, he starts searching for his original body trapped in hell. The gods feared Akira's power and knew they couldn't destroy his body, so they hid it, and Akira had been searching for it ever since, with his luck potentially about to turn. With this, Akira regains consciousness and is fully affected by this flashback. But then his gaze falls on Nanami, who is with him, and without delay, he hugs her. This hug feels strange to Nanami, so she pushes him away and steps aside, then tells him that she only loves Tomo and nobody else can touch her. Hearing the name Tamo, Akura's ears perk up, and he too starts distancing himself from Nanami. He even goes as far as to say that she shouldn't be there with him. It seems there was an incident in the past that caused a rift in the once strong friendship between Tamo and Akura, and now, Akira tries to avoid anything related to Tamo. However, Nanami was completely unaware of this history. Next, we see the creatures at the shrine who were getting bored without Nanami and started playing the hammer. During this time, a letter arrives at the shrine and as the two creatures are about to leave with the letter, Tamo stops them. Tamo is surprised after reading the letter which explains how Nanami is trapped in the other world. He becomes angry with Nanami, thinking that any god would consider multiple times before going to the other world but Nanami had ended up there by herself. He also gets angry with Mizumi, who had decided to take care of Nanami. Without further thought, Tamo decides to go to Nanami in order to bring her back quickly. Meanwhile, Nanami had played a game with the goddess. Somehow, she managed to save Akira and now they had disappeared from there. This made the goddess very angry and she sent a servant to search for them, clearly indicating that they did not know where the two had vanished. Following this, we see Akira who was becoming weaker while staying in the other world, thus he saved himself by taking a strand of Nanami's hair. Nanami was a god, and as long as Akira had something belonging to a god, he would be safe. While they were talking, an announcement made by the goddess's servant interrupts them. The servant declared that they could not leave and should surrender themselves. Akira realized that the goddess didn't know their location, meaning they could sneak out. Nanami then used a talisman to conceal them both, and they started searching for the gate. Meanwhile, the servant had set fire all around to catch them quickly, but Nanami diverted the fire elsewhere. Despite their efforts to find the gate, they only got lost, unable to understand why they couldn't find it. Then we see the war god, who had cleverly blocked the gate with a large stone to prevent Nanami from leaving. When Tamo learns about the war god's actions, he asks him to remove the stone, but the war god refuses. The war god wanted to test if Nanami, being a god, could save herself and escape on her own, otherwise her demise there was deemed necessary. Tamo, enraged, contemplated fighting the war god but was held back by one fact. As Nanami's familiar, he was bound and could not act against any god directly. With this, Tamo decided to sever his ties as a familiar, intending to return to his old form so he could save Nanami by any means necessary. This decision meant breaking a major rule, preparing him for a significant punishment. In the next scene, we see Nanami and Akura dodging the servant, running around, when suddenly the servant attacks Nanami. Nanami was in danger when Tamo arrived and fought the servant, saving Nanami's life. Nanami, relieved and happy, hugs Tamo. We then see Akira, 
who, upon seeing Tamo, drifts into memories of when they were good friends. In the present, Tamo does not recognize Akira, puzzled by the presence of a human in such a place. Instead of answering, Akira asks Tamo about his relationship with Minami. Tamo falls silent for a moment, unable to provide an answer, showing his trouble with the question. Afterwards, Akura tells Tamo that he will soon come to settle their accounts and then suddenly disappears from the spot. Tamo was happy for having saved Nanami's life, but he was still troubled by why he had done so and what Nanami really meant to him. These thoughts consumed him as the next day dawned. In consciousness, Nanami finds herself back at her shrine, with Mizumi by her side, who was continuously apologizing for his mistakes. If he had not left Nanami's side, she would not have had to endure so much. Nanami forgave him, but her gaze was searching for Tamo. She asked Mizumi where Tamo was, to which Mizumi replied that he might have gone out. Feeling a bit relieved, Nanami learns that she has to attend a meeting with the goddess again and asks Mizumi how late she was. Upon arriving at the meeting, Nanami finds out it was already the fourth day, meaning she was quite late. Therefore, she apologizes to the gods for her tardiness. The gods were aware of the chaos Nanami had caused in the other world over the past few days, yet they forgave her. However, during this, Nanami learned that Tamo had been imprisoned for renouncing his role as her familiar. Nanami pleaded with the gods to forgive him, but they stated they could not do so until he became her familiar again. With this solution in mind, Nanami hurried to Tamo and found him shackled. Unable to bear seeing him in this condition, she suggested that he become her familiar again. Tamo was internally conflicted. He couldn't outright refuse Nanami, but asked her to leave, indicating he needed some time to decide whether he wanted to be released or not. After Nanami left, she was deeply troubled, pondering whether Tamo no longer wished to be her familiar. She wanted to be with him, but couldn't force him against his will or go against his decision. Afterwards, we see Mizumi somehow managing to reach Tamo and telling him that he shouldn't hurt Nanami's heart by refusing to become her familiar again, as this refusal was causing her pain. Even Tamo himself couldn't bear the thought of staying away from Nanami. While he was with her, he couldn't do anything but protect her, yet after stepping away from being her familiar, he had decided to live his life away from her. Despite his efforts, he couldn't stop thinking about Nanami. Mizumi, understanding Tamo's feelings, gives him a gift and suggests he go to Nanami. Following Mizumi's advice, Tamo goes to the shrine to find Nanami, but he finds her deeply asleep. He was about to leave the gift beside her and depart when he heard Nanami speaking in her sleep, pleading for Tamo not to leave her. At that moment, Tamo regretted his decision and, after kissing Nanami, became her familiar once again. The next morning, when Nanami woke up and saw Tamo beside her, she was overjoyed. Here, Nanami reveals to Tamo that she had a strange dream the previous night where Tamo came to her and kissed her. When Tamo heard this, he was taken aback and asked if she was not asleep at that time, to which he admitted that she was only feeling all those things. Later, we see Mizumi, who had something mischievous on his mind, coming to Nanami with an odd request. He asked if he could sleep with her that night because he was troubled by sleeping alone and now wanted to sleep in her room with her. Nanami understood his feelings and agreed to let Mizumi stay with her. However, Tamo did not like this idea. He warned Mizumi to watch his words and outright refused Mizumi's offer. Then we see Nanami busy with her work, worried that Tamo might have become her familiar again out of obligation. After finishing her work and finding some free time, Nanami decides to go out to a restaurant with Tamo. While they were sitting together, Tamo decided to ask Nanami something. Tamo asked Nanami if she still liked him, to which Nanami replied that yes, she still liked him as much as she did in the beginning. However, she also mentioned that while she likes him, she doesn't accept his love. Meanwhile, Nanami bumped into an old woman, ruining her clothes in the process. Concerned about her attire, Nanami decided to return to the shrine to change her clothes. She began changing her clothes in front of Tamo, which surprised him and he questioned why she was doing this in front of him. Nanami was confused by Tamo's unusual behavior, as she had previously worn tops under her clothes and roamed around the shrine without any issues. Their exchange escalated into an argument, and Nanami, upset, started crying in front of Tamo. She asked what she had done to make him angry. Realizing his mistake, Tamo approached her, hugged her, and reassured her that there was no need to cry. Contrarily, he suggested she continue wearing tops as she preferred. However, the situation intensified when he informed Nanami that he would be sleeping in her room that night. Nanami, blushing with embarrassment, angrily refuses Tamo. That night, we see Nanami sleeping in her room, with Mizumi and Tamo also sleeping nearby. The next morning reveals that it's the last day of the god meeting, and the weather god visits Nanami to invite her to dinner that evening. They also ask her what she has learned over the past few days. Nanami shares that she has learned how a person's fate is like a thread intertwined with the destinies of many others. 
After their conversation ends, Nanami sees a butterfly, the same one she had seen some time ago, and follows it until she reaches Mikaj. Mikaj expresses his happiness with Nanami's efforts and acknowledges that she has proven herself to be a worthy candidate for godhood. As Mikaj is about to leave, Nanami stops him, requesting that he meet with Teimo one more time. Nanami does not want to cause Teimo any sadness by letting Mikaj leave without seeing him. However, Mikaj could not meet Teimo even if he wanted to. Mikaj revealed that meeting Teimo would not be good for him. In fact, he had deliberately decided to stay away from Tamo for 20 years. Mikaj knew that Tamo was very fond of him, but he was aware of Tamo's lack of affection towards humans, and he had reluctantly allowed Tamo to stay with Nanami so that Tamo could be forced to change his views about humans. Later, we see Tamo sensing Mikaj's presence from afar and attempting to meet him, but Mikaj decides to disappear before Tamo can reach him. Although Mikaj had left, he left some thoughts in Nanami's mind before leaving. He implied that love between a human and a yokai was not possible because yokai have long lifespans while human lives are much shorter. If a human falls in love with a yokai, they can easily forget and leave them. However, yokai are different. Once they fall in love with someone, they cannot leave them and suffer greatly from their departure. With this, Nanami falls into deep thought, pondering Mikaj's words, feeling that she cannot love Teimo as he was a human according to Mikaj's perspective. The next day, we see Mizumi and Teimo fighting over who will go back home with Nanami. However, Nanami refuses both and decides to leave for home by herself. At the airport, Nanami meets a former god who had previously arranged a setup with a boy named Karatu for her. Seeing Nanami alone and not with Temo, the former god and others notice her solitude. The former god decided to lighten Nanami's mood by taking her on a short date, after which they went sightseeing around the city, eventually ending up at Karatu's shop. Taking advantage of the moment alone, the former god asked Nanami about her relationship with Temo, noting her arrival without him and questioning if there was any trouble between them. Nanami shared Mikaj's words, explaining that love between a human and a yokai cannot exist. The former god, while understanding, corrected Nanami by stating that love exists between two individuals, not between a human and a yokai per se. It depends on the couple how they build their relationship. Nanami, now enlightened, decided to find Tamo. On the other side, we see Akura, who was approached by a demon named Ogutera. Ogutara informs Akira that he has come to serve him and is ready to do anything for him. Akira is surprised to learn that the demon knows he is speaking with Akira himself. Without wasting time, Akira asks the demon to prove his loyalty. Ogutara reveals his plan to capture all the demons of Mount Kurama and hand them over to Akira as a sign of his loyalty. Akira decides to give him a chance, and then we switch to Nanami, who is now with Tamo. She tells him about an upcoming Kurama show and that she has two tickets inviting him to join her. However, Teimo refuses to go to the Kurama show, and we then see Nanami accidentally stepping on a child and quickly apologizing for her mistake. The child reveals that he is not a child but a demon named Bontamaru from Mount Kurama, searching for the prince of his realm, Shinjimaru. During this, Teimo suggests Bontamaru go elsewhere to search and ends up kicking him away forcefully. Teimo was surprised that the child could not fly even though he had wings, so he made fun of him. This hurt Bontamaru and he walked away sadly. Nanami felt bad for him and went to comfort him. During their conversation, Bontamaru began to share his sorrowful story, revealing that despite his size, he was unable to fly, which made all of his friends and close ones mock him. One day, while Bontamaru was sitting alone and sad, Suru came to console him. Suru asked Bontamaru why he was crying. Bontamaru disclosed that Shinjimaru, like him, could not fly, which led him to face a lot of bullying. However, Shinjimaru was different as he never cried, and this resilience won Bontamaru's heart. Hearing Bontamaru's story moved Nanami to tears, and she asked how she could help him. Nanami was determined to assist Bontamaru in finding Shinjimaru. And just then, her gaze fell on a photo of Kurama on the wall. Seeing the photo, Bontamaru revealed that Kurama was Shinjimaru, whom he had been searching for a long time. Since Nanami had two tickets to Kurama's show, she decided to take Bontamaru to Kurama. After the show ended, Kurama was delighted to see Nanami and learned from her that someone had come to see him. That was when Bontamaru first laid eyes on Kurama and recognized him as Shinjimaru, urging him to return to Mount Kurama with him. However, Kurama refused, not wanting to return to a place he had left at the age of 17. Bontamaru insisted, explaining that their realm needed him and that he was considered an idol there, making it hard for Kurama to ignore his plea. Meanwhile, Bontamaru fainted, weakened by the open air to which he was not accustomed. This persuaded Kurama to finally agree to return to his realm, remembering his own childhood filled with mockery, but also the support of Suru. After Bontamaru recovered, Nanami and Teimo decided to accompany Kurama back to his realm. 
As they set off toward Kurama's realm, Kurama noticed that the path ahead was not clear, prompting him to take to the air to scout around. He quickly realized that something was preventing them from moving forward. Kurama soon discovered that Shiro was behind all this. Yes, Shiro had taken Bantamaru captive and was even prepared to take his life, but then revealed to Kurama that his wing was damaged when he helped Kurama as a child. One day, in an attempt to help Kurama fly, Shiro had trapped him in a cave where monsters attacked. Shiro managed to save Kurama, but his wing was damaged in the process. What hurt Shiro the most was that despite all his help, Kurama disappeared without seeing him again, leaving forever. A fight ensued between Shiro and Kurama, but during the fight, Kurama heard the sound of an instrument. He realized that the Shiro in front of him was an imposter, and the real Shiro was playing the instrument from afar, just like in their childhood. Enraged, Kurama defeated the imposter and then returned to where Nanami and Tema were. After a while, they reached a gate where they encountered the real Shiro, and upon seeing him, Kurama bowed in respect. Nanami had come to understand that despite Kurama's anger, he held a deep respect for Shiro. Following the confrontation, Shiro invited them all to his home, welcoming them warmly. During their visit, Nanami urgently needed to use the restroom and asked Shiro for permission, but Shiro denied her request, forcing Nanami to look for an alternative outside. Meanwhile, attention shifts to a girl holding a pet animal in front of her brothers. The brothers questioned why she was keeping the pet, to which she explained that the animal's mother had passed away, and she wanted to take care of it peacefully, intending to keep it with her. The brothers agreed with Nanami, but mentioned they couldn't keep the animal hidden. Then Drew arrives and kills the pet, arguing that weak animals or persons cannot survive in this place and he would eliminate or expel all the weak. The children became frightened of Juru's declaration. At this moment, Obutera, the same demon, intervenes telling Juru to leave. Obutera had news that Kurama had arrived and stood a good chance of becoming their next master. Juru disliked this news as he had made himself powerful over the years and was not willing to allow Kurama to become the next master under any circumstances. While searching for a restroom, Nanami stumbled upon a withered tree she intended to heal. However, local children stopped her, misunderstanding her intentions. Nanami explained her desire to heal the tree and successfully revitalize it using her talisman, but the tree's leaves began to fall rapidly. Realizing she couldn't sustain the tree for long, she decided to move on. But Jeru appeared, mistaking her for an intruder and began harassing her. In this moment, Jeru was also visibly flustered, having been captivated by Nanami at first sight and was confused about her presence. He informed Nanami that women were not allowed in this area and questioned her activities there. Nanami, unaware of such a rule, apologized and prepared to leave. Just then, someone called out Jeru by name, drawing him away, and Nanami realized that this was the Jeru whom Kurama had mentioned. Nanami, with the help of Mamoru, manages to escape and returns home. She tells everyone about her encounter with Jeru, and Shiru is surprised that Nanami survived after meeting Jeru. Kurama, wanting to heal the current master and leave, plans to use a special medicine. He intends to use a divine tablet to heal the master. However, Kurama faces a problem. Juru has created a barrier around the shrine, making it impossible for him to reach the master directly. Determined, Kurama decides that he is willing to confront Juru directly if necessary to save the master's life. Suddenly, some people enter the house, delighted to see Kurama back. They all want Kurama to become their next master, but Kurama is confused by this. He had come for a different purpose and now fears being forced into the role of master, abandoning his recent life. Seeking solitude to think, Kurama steps outside. Shuru then decides to let Kurama and his friends leave because if Kurama stays any longer, he might be compelled to abandon his current life and become the master of this realm. Temo approached Kurama, offering his help if Kurama truly wanted to save the master's life. With Kurama's agreement, they all move forward with a plan to find a way into the shrine. They had found the hall's path but were puzzled about how to enter through the gate. After a lengthy discussion, they decided that Nanami and Bantamaru would distract Jeru, while Kurama and Teimo would work together to save the master. That night, Teimo came to sleep in the same room as Nanami due to the availability of only one room, forcing them to share. During the night, Teimo saw Nanami sleeping peacefully and hugged her without waking her, but Nanami woke up and kicked Teimo out of the room. The next morning, they all changed their attire, with Nanami taking on the form of familiar Kurama assuming the guise of a god and Teimo joining them. They reached the gate but were stopped there, their plan on the verge of failure. However, Jeru arrived and granted them permission to enter inside the shrine. Jeru was surprised by Kurama's transformation into a god. Kurama then extends a gesture of friendship by offering Jeru a drink. This drink was special because it was intended to weaken Jeru allowing Nanami and Bantamaru to navigate the shrine's barriers more easily and reach the master. 
Mamami and Bontamaru, engaged in their mission, managed to sneak into a room but found themselves lost, unable to see a clear path forward due to the barriers created by Jiru. Mamaru revealed that they were surrounded by barriers set by Jiru, making it impossible to advance further. Nanami realized they needed to wait for Kurama's plan to take effect. However, Jiru, even after consuming the drink, remained unaffected, showing no signs of weakness from the drink. Teimo, disguising as Minami, successfully distracted Jiru, giving the real Minami a chance to move forward. She reached a room where she saw the master sitting across from her. Mamoru then disclosed that the divine pill would be useless because someone had extracted the soul from the master's body. At that moment, Obutera appeared, capturing them. Following this, Jiru, so surprised by Nanami's presence, is informed by Obutera about the two intruders. Teimo was about to attack Jiru, sensing the danger, but Kurama stopped him, asserting to Jiru that they had no connection with the intruders, so he shouldn't worry about them. However, Jiru ignored their explanations and imprisoned them in a cage, taking them down to the basement where Obutera had held the intruders captive. In the basement, Jiru vented his anger on Bontamaru for still being weak and unable to fly. After some discussion, Nanami asked Jiru why he had removed the master's soul, but Obutera ended the conversation there. Jiru himself was unaware that the master's soul had been extracted and left the scene after hearing Obutera's words. Once Jiru had left, Obutera revealed his hand in removing the master's soul and his intention to eliminate both Nanami and Bontamaru, planning to tell Jiru that they had destroyed themselves. Before Obutera could attack Nanami, she used her talisman to strike him first. Nanami's counterattack overwhelmed Obutera, causing him to flee further into the basement. Then we see Jiru leaving the hall, but he pauses when he notices some children looking at him fearfully. It's clear from Jiru's demeanor that he doesn't wish to harm the children, yet he can't bear to leave them in a state of vulnerability and weakness. Meanwhile, Jiru learns from someone that a girl radiating white light is running through the hall at great speed. This girl is Minami, the source of the light, who is on a mission to capture Obutera. Shortly after, Bontamaru reaches Temo and Kurama and informs them about Nanami's quest to find the Master's soul. Eventually, Nanami finds the gate that would allow her to retrieve the Master's soul. However, as she approaches, Jiru arrives and decides to help her. Together, they break through the door to get inside. At this moment, Jiru recalls when Shiru first saved Kurama and lost his wing in the process. After that incident, Shiru had told Jiru to let Kurama leave and never to follow him again. As Manami and Jiru reached inside the cave, a beast attacked Manami. Jiru managed to save her life and began to fight the beast. Meanwhile, Teimo and Kurama arrived at the scene and joined the fight against the beast, helping to save Nanami. They managed to retrieve the master's soul from the beast's mouth and proceeded to heal the master with it. Afterward, Nanami felt sad in that she couldn't prevent Jiru from getting injured despite her efforts. Her thoughts about Jiru made her feel despondent. When she went to see Jiru, she was surprised to find him with Shiru. Shiru had told Jiru that Nanami had given her divine pill to save his life, highlighting her sacrifice. Kurama was now with the fully recovered master, ready to take care of the realm himself. That night, a celebration took place and Jiru, fully healed, took advantage of the moment to whisk Nanami away and sit with her atop a tree. Jiru confesses to Nanami that he has grown fond of her, and offers her the option to stay and spend the rest of her life there. However, Nanami's heart belongs only to Temo, and she cannot leave him. Afterward, in a state of intoxication from the celebration, Temo takes care of Minami, who once again confesses her affection for him as they make their way home. Eventually, everyone returns to their city, and we see Akira finding a way to the other world, determined to go there no matter what. Ogbutera insists on accompanying him. Despite initially refusing, Akira ultimately agrees to take Obutera with him. They enter a magical mirror together and safely arrive in the other world. Akira knew he was safe because he possessed a strand of Manami's hair, but he was curious about how Obutera managed to survive the transition. He demands Ogutera to reveal his true identity and his reasons for following Akira. Obutera then reveals that he has been a follower of Akira, too shy to meet him directly but holding great respect for him. Afterward, Obutara also shared that there was a time when Akira and Teimo were close friends, but one day Teimo left Akura, and Akira's body became trapped in the other world permanently. Akira was angry because this happened due to Teimo falling in love with a girl. Akira then set out to find his body, but he realized it was kept in an extremely hot place when he saw a lot of warmth. He knew he couldn't easily approach it because his body was in a place with high temperatures. Determined to retrieve his body no matter what, Akura started moving towards the source of the heat, the lava. However, Obutera stopped him, warning that he couldn't go to such a place that day. If he did, his human body would face many problems. 
Eventually, they returned to the human world and Akira decided he would return to the other world later fully prepared. Suddenly, a lot of energy began to emit from the mirror spreading poison to the surrounding area. Initially, Akura was willing to leave the mirror as it was, even if it meant risking lives. But then he remembered Kirihito's mother and destroyed the mirror, making it impossible for him to return to the other world even if he wanted to. Meanwhile, Teimo was heading to meet the year god for some work, and Nanami insisted on accompanying him. Following this, we see Minami, Teimo, and Mizumi at the Year God's Gate, where they are faced with the challenge of crossing the next 12 gates. Mizumi and Teimo explain that these aren't ordinary gates, they represent the past 12 years of their lives and one must navigate through these years to reach the end of the gate's passage. Mizumi is hesitant, but Nanami, without hesitation, steps into the gate and finds herself at the age of 12. She encounters her father, who distracts her with the promise of chocolate only to disappear for a while. Then we see her mother dealing with people who came to collect rent, despite not having enough money. She somehow manages to send them away for the time being. Teimo, interested in learning more about Nanami's past, follows her through the gates. Teimo reveals that Nanami's mother was suffering from an illness, implying that she wouldn't be able to stay with Nanami much longer. Nanami's mother, distressed by her husband's actions, reminds Nanami that women in their family are beautiful and strong, while their husbands tend to be problematic. Therefore, her mother advised Minami to stay away from marriage. Soon after, Nanami's mother passed away, leaving her to live with her father, who carelessly caused a fire in their home with a cigarette. They then moved to a house barely habitable. At this point, Nanami had neither a home nor friends. Then, Teimo comes to cheer her up, successfully making her happy. He spends the entire day with young Minami, who falls in love with him. Forgetting everything else, young Minami asks Teimo if he likes her. Surprisingly, Teimo says yes, which even he doubts, leading to young Nanami deciding she will marry Teimo when she grows up. Back in the present, Nanami wakes up with no recollection of her childhood. While this seems fine to Mizumi, Teimo tries to remind her of their past, but to no avail. Finally, they enter through the gate and reach the year god, who was struggling to cut his ship's hair because the ship itself was resistant to being cut. Nanami talks to the ship, persuading it to allow its hair to be cut, which pleases the year god greatly. As a gift, the year god presents Nanami with a picture of her mother, recognizing that Nanami had forgotten many details of her childhood, including her mother's face. With the arrival of the new year, marking one year since Nanami became a god, we see her enjoying the festivities with Teimo and Mizumi. Then the focus shifts to Kurama, who receives a visit from Juru and Shiru. They have come to take him back, intending to spend the day training him. We also see Kataru and the former god looking very happy, celebrating the new year. Lastly, we catch a glimpse of Akura who has developed an affection for Kirihito's mother, beginning to see her as a motherly figure in his life. Thus, this New Year episode brings the season to a close. We'll be back with a new episode soon.